So Josie, I think it would be really important for us to summarize uh, the discussion that you and Melanie just had. Absolutely, and what we'll try and do, Suzanne, is we can probably go down uh, the different factors that we feel definitely influence mm -hmm. um, uh, the nutritional choice that you will be making for your companion bird. And taking them one at a time will perhaps be able to help you evaluate as a caretaker what kind of information you need to combine and compile, ideally in your pet status profile. Exactly. This is a wonderful tool that you can Absolutely. fill out and bring to your vet. Yes, and this is available online on our Harry website, mm -hmm. in our Harry forms. It's also was featured in your Parrot Life Volume 1 issue. And, and the goal of this pet status profile, what we wanted to achieve with this, is help caretakers write down the pertinent information mm -hmm. that then can be brought along on your yearly or uh, veterinarian uh, consultation mm -hmm. or to your uh, avian specialty store where the avian consultant then can use the information that you've already uh, committed quite some time to answering accurately right. and then help you assess all the different factors and the caloric requirements and we will be going through these now one by one. So one factor that we should talk about what, to assess uh, whether you should, which formula you should use of Tropican um, is the life stage. Um, it's often confusing a little bit to decide which life stage your, your companion parrot is actually in. Absolutely. Especially there's a lot of uh, species variabilities. Mm -hmm. uh, if we're talking about a uh, budger agar, the budgies uh, usually reach a stage of maturity at perhaps one years old, whereas a macaw might take six or seven years to reach maturity. Right. Uh, often also when our uh, fledglings leave uh, our care here at Hari, uh, unfortunately inexperienced caretakers might uh, view this bird that is fully feathered and assume that this bird has reached maturity. And we know for behavioral issues and training and education that they are still fledglings and they might right. be fledglings for another year and a half if they're a macaw. Right. So this is very important to evaluate based on the species that you have in your care. And once more, very important to use the avian specialists and your avian veterinarian and technician to help you evaluate whether this bird has now graduated from being a fledgling and is now in its juvenile years. Mm -hmm. Whether this bird is about to reach sexual maturity. Now we know as breeders here that, that, that this is something that we all have in the files and we're paying very much attention to that because that is making a difference whether these birds are still flocking in a juvenile flight or they're about now to pair a bond and they're then eventually going to start breeding and we'll see the evidence of that in the behavior around mm -hmm. the nest cavity. For companion birds now, it's, it's quite different. Yes. And if, if uh, caretakers are doing it well, then they're not sexually or hormonally overcharging their birds, then you won't see the reproduction behavior, the onset of the hormonal overdrive. Mm -hmm. and, and so you might assume that your bird has not reached maturity where it has. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is very important for species that are predisposed to uh, having uh, calcium deficiencies, such as the typical African gray. And, and this is where we always mention to people that it's important to know what the sex of their bird is, whether they want to breed it or not. It's not just mm -hmm. to figure out what kind of name the bird will have for the rest of its life, but it's very important to them. Make sure that this is a female, then we must ensure that the bird will have the required amounts of calcium and vitamin E. Mm -hmm. Even if we're not purposefully uh, inducing or stimulating reproduction, right. the bird will nonetheless require this to go through its reproductive stages. Mm -hmm. So that would be another factor that we would use to assess, assess would be the reproductive activity. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and this is what we call also part of the life stages. Mm -hmm. uh, the geriatrics, many people fail to recognize that their birds have now aged and they're starting to embark in geriatric mm -hmm. uh, years. And, and there will be several um, medical predispositions for these birds. Arthritis, perhaps, we have to be extra careful that we're not creating a, a gout mm -hmm. um, and we're not uh, contributing now to too much proteins and we're not giving this bird too much fat as well. So uh, very important to always consult, read, research on the internet as much as you can and in fantastic books that can give you additional insight as to your specific species and where they fall based on a number of years. Now, another thing that's occurring quite often now is there's a lot of birds that are being rehomed, mm -hmm. and often the uh, captive bred band is no longer on the leg, and there's not been any information that traveled with the bird. And so sometimes evaluating the age of the bird, the accurate age of the bird, can be quite challenging, even for 
a, a very qualified avian specialist. Mm -hmm. And so this is something that we have to uh, look at with a little bit more attention. And, and this is, I, I think, a particular case where several veterinarian visits throughout the year can be beneficial to the bird.